If you're new to my channel, my name's Adam and I've lived in Vancouver for about five years now. Usually on the channel, I'm sharing the awesome lifestyle and activities that the city has to offer. But just like in every city, there are some things that aren't perfect. And because of that, people have been asking me, is Vancouver still worth it in 2022? Let's talk about some things that are not just sunshine and rainbows, you know, some negatives, some things that people should know so everyone can have a rounded package of information about Vancouver living. But if you only wanna hear about the positives, I have a ton of other videos um, that you can click up here or down below. So if you're gonna live in Vancouver, you most likely need a job, right? Which brings up the question, are there enough jobs? The bigger the job, the better the job, the more competition there's gonna be, 100%. And since we're in a big city, an important thing to keep in mind is that most likely when you're applying for a job that seems pretty good, there are a lot of people thinking the same thing. And some of the time there's gonna be people who are more qualified than you applying to the same job. And that's more likely here in a big city because there's just more people to apply for those jobs. And at the end of the day, companies will have more options when selecting who they wanna hire. For example, if you're coming here and you want a you know job right away, something relatively simple, maybe you wanna work in retail or work at a restaurant. Most of the time getting a job similar to those is quite easy. It may take some interviews and some applying, but I think you can definitely do it. I actually recently went through a job search process because I was thinking of getting another job. And I figured it'd be interesting to share how it went for me. So in the end, over two months, I applied for about 20 positions. I got about 10 interviews. And in the end, I got two job offers. And just so you know, these were for like marketing positions or content creator or marketing manager, those type of positions. And keep in mind, I was only applying for jobs that I thought I was actually a good fit for and I, I fit the criteria. So 20 applications, two offers, I would say that's like about average for that kind of role. From those 10 interviews, they were offering around $50,000 to $75,000 thousand dollars just throwing that in there for some extra information. Of course, some industries and skills are more in demand than others right now, but in general, you can kind of assume that if you're moving to a big city for the first time, it might take you a bit longer to find a position because there's more people trying to get the same jobs. It's no secret Vancouver is an expensive city, but just calling it expensive doesn't really do it justice. The minimum wage in British Columbia just got announced to be going up from $15 to $15.55, and that's a good thing right? Well, technically, yes, but unfortunately, it's still not enough to meet Vancouver's living wage. And living wage is defined as the hourly wage a worker needs to earn to cover their basic expenses and participate in their community. Sometimes it is a reality that people move here and they get a job and every single cent they make goes toward their bills or their rent or their food. And sometimes even because minimum wage is under that living wage, you might not make enough to cover your expenses. I always recommend to people if they're planning to move here, make sure if you don't have a job lined up, make sure to come with savings. You know, at least have a few months, if possible, have even more of savings to live off of if you don't get a job right away or if you get a job that just doesn't pay you a ton. You know, just an example of the crazy cost of living is that in Vancouver, it's more likely for people between 20 and 30 to live with roommates than to live in their own apartment. And that sounds okay, right? In your, in your early 20s to have roommates and stuff, but I'm sure by the time that we're all 30, we kind of want to have our own space. But if you do want that, you have to be making a decent amount of money, around $75,000 a year, actually. That's around the salary you'd want to be making in Vancouver to afford your own one bedroom apartment. And that's just renting, by the way, not owning it. If you're interested in seeing Vancouver apartments and how much they rent for, I do have a apartment series touring people's apartments in Vancouver up here. And the final note on expenses is, will you ever be able to own a property here? Well, most likely not. Personally, I am someone who wants to own a house or a property here in Vancouver in the future. And something I often tell myself is that there's two ways to do it. You either buy a house, but it's somewhere else. You move away pretty much, or there is one other option. The other option is you make a ton of money. So then you can afford something here. That's the one I'm trying to do. The Vancouver housing market has almost gone up 20% just in 2022 already. Will there be a crash? Maybe it's possible, but things will still be very expensive even after a crash. Just going off the current market rates, if you did want to buy a single family home at some point, like this one will say, you would need to have around a household income of $250,000 a year. Because those are the type of numbers that would allow you to afford something like that with a mortgage and you know enough of a down payment and all those details. I just think they're interesting numbers to know if you're like me and you maybe did want to buy one or try to buy one at one point. Now, I do want to take a second to thank the sponsor of this video, Neo Financial, which is actually very relevant because as we just discussed, it is very expensive to live here. The more money we save, the better, and Neo's cashback credit card is a great way to get that done. Their cashback credit card is actually the one that I have, and I personally think one of the best things about their service is that you can 
browse their partners on their app and see how much money you'll get back at each place. So if you're deciding where to order food and you see that you can get more cash back on one location than another, it might help you make that decision. They've also got a map so you can see what kind of cash back offers are actually close to you in your area. You can get 15% cash back at most of their partners on your first purchase, 5% average cash back at all their partners, and a minimum of 1% cash back on everything you purchase. Neo is 100% digital, which means you can apply online and get approved in a few minutes. The card's available Canada-wide, there are zero annual fees, and of course, you can add it to your Apple wallet. So if you're someone who loves getting cash back, this card is a great way to do it. I'll leave a link to Neo's card below this video if you wanna check it out or even sign up. And thank you again, Neo, for sponsoring this portion of the video. Getting hot in here talking about Vancouver. Let's talk about seasonal depression. And I'm not really playing around with this term either. It is a real thing. And it affects a lot of people in Vancouver. I made a video talking about Vancouver's weather as a whole. And in that video, I said, it doesn't rain that much. And people destroyed me in the comments for saying that. They felt very passionate that it did rain a lot. And maybe it's just because I'm a little bit used to it. But there are still times where the grayness and coldness and wetness like still gets to me. The current weather like right now is one of the things that inspired me to make this video. And to be honest, sometimes it feels like you're living in a cloud. And that might sound kind of cool, but it's not. <laughs> that is, that's not the point. We just had a full week of just gray skies and rain. And it says this week is supposed to be the same. And you do not feel motivated when there's no sun. Everything seems like a task. Overall, the point is in the winter time when the sun is not out as often, a lot of people get sad when the weather is really gloomy. A lot of people try to escape and go on vacations if they're able to. That's what I did. A week in the sun, I felt really recharged and came back here. The next thing to be aware of on this list is ICBC. Although this most likely isn't life altering for you, a lot of people find it weird or annoying when they move here. What is ICBC? Well, ICBC is the Insurance Corporation of British Columbia. In simple terms, it's an auto insurance company Company that is owned by the government. And what makes it a monopoly is that in British Columbia and Manitoba, there are not allowed to be any private auto insurance companies, which means there's no competition and pretty much ICBC can change their rates and people will just have to pay them because you have to have insurance. But unfortunately, we actually pay the highest insurance premiums in the whole country. And since the provinces don't allow private auto insurance companies, you just can't really do anything about it. And because of that, everything goes through this one company. And if you don't like how the company does things, it's kind of just too bad. The next thing on this list is it can be somewhat difficult and kind of a lot of steps to get PR in Canada, permanent residency. Getting PR in most countries isn't usually an easy task, but we definitely have quite a few steps here in Canada. Clearly this point is more about Canada as a whole than just Vancouver. And also it's for people who wanna live here and stay here. For those of you who don't know, PR is you know permanent residency. It lets you just stay in Canada forever. You can't just apply for it. You have to be in Canada for at least three years living here and also pass an exam like a test when you're actually applying to become a permanent resident. A really quick overview that I wrote out of you know how to get PR is usually you first apply for a work visa to come to Canada. Once you get here, you start applying for jobs. And once you have a job, you pretty much want to stay in that job for about three years. Usually work visas are only 12 months maximum in length. But if you stay in a job and you're working, you can apply to have that visa extended. So you pretty much want to move here and then work for three years and continue working so you can keep extending your visa. And then once you've been here for long enough, Enough, you apply for that PR. What's the conclusion though? Can you move here and still start a future? As I mentioned at the beginning of the video, I have a lot more content based on the positives than the negatives of the city. And that's truly because there are just more positives. Maybe you don't want to buy a house in the future. Then, you know, that's not even an issue for you. And maybe you don't mind the gray weather or the rain. Then really overall, there aren't many downsides at all. I still live here. And like I said, I've been here for five years and I don't really plan on moving anytime soon. If you are planning on moving here, I do have a moving to Vancouver guide that I will link below this video. And I'll also link Neo's cashback credit card down there if you were interested in that. And with that said, I'll see you guys next week.